Hey guys, I'm going to talk about hooking up an uh, amplifier that normally runs with dual supply voltages on single supply. And I have a sample circuit set up here to try out. But first we'll take a look at the schematic. Talk about why you may want to do it and why you may not want to do this and uh, just see what it takes to set one of these up. Well, when I say dual supply, in case you haven't watched my other videos, that's an amplifier that has a positive supply voltage, a negative supply voltage, and ground. When you hook it up single supply, you just have the supply ground and a positive voltage. Now you can do this with just about any amplifier I see that has dual supply. A lot of times they show you right on the data sheet. You can also do it with about any discrete transistorized amplifier. At certain points in the circuit there might be ground references you have to get to, but you can really, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't do it. But, you know, why would you want to in some cases? But anyway, here is the circuit. It's pretty much the same as a dual supply circuit outside of a few things. Well, there's this interesting circuit right here. We have to add a coupling capacitor to block DC getting to the speaker on the output. And of course, the pin that normally had the negative supply on it is now ground. And this positive supply pin is still the positive supply. Now just like those little op amp ICs like the 741, TLO, 72, NE5532, all the other little um, op amps can also be hooked up for single supply and they'll have the same exact circuit. This is really an op amp, it's just a power op amp for you know driving a speaker. Well, the reason is you have to push the output voltage to one half of the supply voltage. And here is why. We have the, I have this diagram. We'll say our power supply voltage is 12 volts. And we have to set the output to be 6 volts. Because we can't have it at zero anymore. Because if a, you put a signal on it, it's going to go like this. You're only going to get part of the output and it's going to sound horrible something nasty so we have to level shift the output to one half the supply voltage and the output signal now rides on that six volts in this example now we don't want to put any DC on a speaker so we block that by putting a capacitor and it has to be a large value capacitor because you don't want to attenuate your low frequencies. And we'll look at that in more detail in a minute because there is some negative effects of having that capacitor there. Okay, so how do we get the supply voltage, I'm sorry, the output voltage to be one half the supply voltage? We do it with this circuit here. It goes from supply through a couple resistors to ground. Now I redrew this circuit over here so it makes more sense. It's more like a ladder diagram going from zero potential up to the supply voltage. Well what happens if you put two resistors together in series? What is the voltage at the midpoint? Well it's going to be one half the supply voltage. What is the reason for the capacitor that's connected across the lower resistor. Well, there's a couple reasons. One, it keeps this volt, this uh, voltage supplied here clean. You see, this connects to our input through this resistor. And when this is making output, you know, there's high current going to the output, the supply voltage will waver a little bit. 
and you don't want that to show up here on your input otherwise you'll get oscillation or distortion thing will probably oscillate so that stabilizes that uh, that DC voltage here you know it removes the noise the second thing is pretty interesting well let's say you're running this amplifier at 50 volt supply half supply voltage is going to be 25 volts if you power up the amplifier suddenly 25 volts appears once to charge up that's going to make the cone of that speaker go bump you know it's going to make a loud pop it can even damage the speaker and if the amplifier does not have current limit it could even damage the amplifier but most IC amplifiers do have built-in protections and it's just bad you don't want your speaker cone popping out real hard like that so what this does you know you have this resistance here it's gonna slow the charging of this capacitor so this is not when you first power it up this is gonna be at zero volts and it's gonna slowly increase as this capacitor charges up because again this input is referenced to this voltage and I should mention that the DC gain of this amplifier is one so you put one volt here you get one volt here you put five volts here you get five volts you know it's DC gain of one so we're putting half the supply voltage you're going to get half the supply voltage here so it charges up gently bring ramps that up slowly so the speaker doesn't pop out you know suddenly when you power it up it does delay the turn on time so if you're playing a signal when you first turn the amplifier on you might get distortion or you may not get uh, sound at all but after a couple of seconds it should stabilize and sound okay another thing is well if you fire this amplifier up with no speaker connected well this still is going to charge up and you know, and if you're running 50 volt supply with a 25 volt you know uh, showing at your output pin if you connect a speaker it will make a loud pop sound so sometimes they put a little resistor across here so the capacitor does charge up and the speaker won't uh, pop I've seen that in some um, consumer type amplifiers that were single supply so yeah just a couple things you have to watch out for when you're doing this okay let's look at another problem with the circuit well this capacitor here is going to act like a high pass filter the lower the frequency the capacitive reactance makes less current flow so of course we choose a fairly large value capacitor let's say at 40 hertz you know amplifiers are usually rated down to 20 hertz to be flat in frequency response but you know a lot of music doesn't go below 40 yeah there's some types of music with a lot of deep bass in it but this is just for sake of discussion so we take the old reactance formula for capacitors 2 pi times frequency times the capacitor will give us the equivalent impedance so we'll say 2 pi 40 hertz and we'll use the uh, 2.2 millifarad or 2200 microfarad same thing and we have 1.8 ohms okay for the sake of discussion we'll say our amplifier is putting a 10 volt RMS signal out what is its output power into a 4 ohm load well it's 10 it's voltage square over the resistance so it's 100 divided by 4 25 watts 
what is it if we put the capacitor in there? See, this is what the amplifier can deliver to the load without any hindrance or capacitor or anything in the way. Okay, so now we have that capacitor. We have the 220 microfarad capacitor. I'm sorry, 2200 microfarad capacitor, 2.2 millifarads at 40 hertz. So, like I said before, we have 1.8 ohms. So we do the math and find out that we have, you know, it's 4, uh, four ohms plus 1.8, you know, 5.8. Then we can determine the current in the speaker, and then determine how many, how much power is actually dissipated in that speaker. Well, look what happens. At 40 hertz, we have 11.9. We've about 12 watts. So we have rolled off slightly more than 3 dB. Well, that's nothing close to what the amplifier should be doing. You know, it should be nice and flat down to 20 hertz at least. So, even though we used a fairly large capacitor, we are rolling off the signal significantly. So these are not great if you need something that produces deep bass. Yeah, you can increase this capacitor even more but it becomes a problem with this charging and you know you have to have this be able to ramp the voltage up slowly like I previously mentioned it just becomes a point where it's not practical to increase the capacitance here so that is one argument for not doing this and you know if you want to run on batteries you can run, or I should say, you can make a split supply just using two batteries. Some people go, well, what if the voltages are not equal? Well, amplifiers do not care. You can run the positive voltage 12 volts, run the negative voltage 6 volts. Well, it would clip early on the negative rail because it only has 6 volts to work with. But the output voltage is going to be zero. It's not going to cause any, uh, you know, voltage to show up on the speaker because the input's reference to ground. So it's always going to be zero volts on the output when there's no signal. So you know, if your batteries are not charged up evenly, it doesn't bother the amplifier any. You you can still make a dual supply amp just fine. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at an actual circuit. Now, in this example, I'm using a TDA 2050 IC. And I'm going to run it on 4.5 volts. Yep, the TDA 2050 will work at very low voltages. Of course, on low voltages, it's not going to put out a lot of power. But it will work. It uh, it turns these turn on around three volts, but you need a little bit more voltage. So I'm running it at four volts, and uh, of course it's configured as single supply. And let me put the battery on. I set this circuit up earlier today, and I forgot to take the battery out. It's been running for hours. But I, you know, I took it out moments ago. But let me turn it on here. Look at that. That sounds like a working amplifier. Let me hook up the music player. And we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, the music player is hooked up. And then I fit into the Crops of people standing everywhere. It's running on four and a half volts or 
whatever these are run down to. And if you touch the input to the output cap, oscillator, well, there you have it. Single supply audio amplifier. So, yeah, um, you can do it because of the drawbacks I wouldn't really want to do it I'd somehow rig it up so I could run it dual supply even with batteries so you might have to come up with a dual battery situation but that's what I would recommend well that's it thanks for watching